Welcome to episode one of Puppy Corner, a new series here at Doberman Planet. Today, we are deep diving into the puppy health testing that's done by breeders and the role that all this plays in your puppy search, happening right now on Doberman Planet. I'm really excited guys for this new series Puppy Corner here at Doberman Planet. It's a series dedicated just to those of you who are in the middle of or about to begin their Doberman puppy search. I realize there are just a lot of you in that boat on my channel and I wanted to do everything I could to help you out because there's just so much to know when it comes to this topic with Dobermans. So I reached out to my good friends over at the Doberman Diversity Project who agreed to provide me with some amazing technical knowledge and insight into the Doberman breed's inner workings and their health of that breed and to help, just help make this series as accurate, as helpful, and just with the absolute latest knowledge possible about the Doberman breed. So let's jump straight into the first episode of this new series dedicated all just to you, the new puppy buyer. First up, let's talk about why health testing is even part of the Doberman puppy search in the first place. Well, when you're going to select two Dobermans to breed to make puppies, you really want as much information as possible, and health testing can provide you an insight not just into what conditions they have currently, but what genetic issues they might pass on to their offspring down the road. And it's incredibly important for helping to improve the future behavior of the puppies and the health of future generations of Dobermans. Think of it like this, when you go to buy a used car and you bring it to your mechanic first to get checked out, or maybe you get like a Carfax report to see the history of the car. You're doing your due diligence to make sure you're getting the best car possible. It's like that, but in this case, it's with a future family member for your household, which is pretty big deal. So how important exactly? Well, the Doberman breed is certainly prone to its own fair share of genetic health issues, just like many other purebred dogs are. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM, is one of those health issues. This is a weakening of the heart muscle that's starting to become uh, real serious issues with the Doberman breed. And um, that's one of those that can be detected um, pretty early on by a vet, uh, even before the owner can see any outward signs of it. It's also one where its risk factors can be detected in a genetic test. Uh, Von Wildebrand's disease, or VWD, that's a blood clotting disorder that's common in Dobermans. And that one can be seen in genetic testing as well, or at least the risk factors for it. And uh, screenings can detect if the dog's affected by it also. Um, hip dysplasia is another common one in the Doberman breed, although it's usually detected when the dog is a little older, um, an adult and onward, but that one can be detected by a vet as well. So these are all important things to consider by a breeder when they're choosing which mates to bring together to make a healthy litter. And it's important that puppy buyers continue to expect this health testing from the breeders to help ensure a healthy future for the Doberman breed as a whole. Now, how does this all work when it comes to the puppy breeder and the buyer? Well, generally the breeders will get their dogs either genetic health tested or health screened and they will provide those results to any potential puppy buyers. Now, some puppy buyers will want more testing done than the breeder usually does and may pay for that additional testing out of their own pocket. Um, but generally the breeder will provide you with proof of genetic health testing or health screenings that they've done on the parents or the litter themselves, but usually it's just the parents. So what's the difference between genetic health testing and health screening when it comes to this? Well, genetic health testing is what's done on the parents. It's usually a DNA test that's like a cheek swab. For example, that Embark DNA test kit that I talk about very often on my channel, that's a genetic health test. And that can just give you some great insights into what uh, genetic factors the parents have or potential conditions they may have even passed on to your future puppy. Um, and the results of those will be given to you usually in a certificate certificate form or maybe a lab printout or sometimes a breeder will just give you the printed out Embark results uh, for that genetic health test. Now a health screening is a little bit different. This usually involves a physical exam of the dog by a vet or other specialist and they're usually checking for things like for example the condition of the dog's hips or elbows or the heart function or the liver function. Uh, and as one example, um, the condition of the dog's hips is a common one since hip dysplasia is really common in Dobermans and the breeder might receive an OFA rating or pen hip rating on the condition of that dog's hips. And uh, here's one example certificate of an OFA, Orthopedic Foundation for Animals rating for a dog's hips. And in this case, a dog 
was rated as having a good condition for their hips. Dilated cardiomyopathy is another condition that's diagnosed by health screening and not genetic health testing. What they'll usually do is an echocardiogram of the dog's heart, which is a machine that allows the vet to watch the dog's heart as it's beating and measure things like the thickness of the, of the walls of the heart and that kind of thing. And or they might use a 24-hour Holter monitor, which is a small device that attaches to the side of the dog, stays there for about 24 hours recording the activity of the heart so that it can be analyzed later. That's a big difference from genetic health testing for DCM, which is something like the DCM1 test or the DCM2 test, which only looks for specific genetic markers in the DNA that could indicate a potential risk factor for developing DCM. Whereas these health screenings of the echocardiogram and the, uh, ec uh, the Holter monitor is what actually allows a vet to diagnose DCM as actually currently happening in the dog at that point. That's a big difference. Now, if an echocardiogram is done on the parents, very often the breeder will provide you with an echo report such as this one right here on your screen. And in this example, the dog that was examined was diagnosed as having evidence of DCM present, as you can see right there under the diagnosis heading. But if the dog was tested and was clear of any evidence of DCM, this is also where you would see it in the report. Now, if the breeder did a 24-hour Holter monitor um, on the dog, you'll get a report such as this one right here. Here's an example of that. And looking at this first uh, section, these are any erratic or abnormal heart rhythms. Um, also, under the PVC summary in the comments section in this report, which depending on the vet, it might say VPC instead, but it should generally say zero. But technically, anything less than 50 PVC or VPC singles are considered normal for Dobermans. If there are any runs or couplets or triplets listed, then those are definitely abnormal and are a cause for concern. So basically health screenings are more of like an in-person exam by a vet or specialist and genetic health testing is a blood or saliva sample that's tested and they look for certain genetic markers. But no matter which one you receive, make sure that any proof that you're given from the breeder contains some sort of identifying information about which specific dog was tested. So you can make sure that those tests definitely apply to the parents of whatever puppy that you're considering. Now, most breeders, even very reputable ones will generally just test their dogs and breed the best to the best in terms of health in hopes of producing a better puppy. Now surprisingly there might be a better approach to that called using something called the estimated breeding values or EBVs of a mating pair. Um, now just breeding the best of the best dogs um, may not produce a healthier dog and it may not even produce a healthier breed overall whereas the estimated breeding values and breeding based on those um, although definitely more complicated because it's a statistical method of selecting breeding mates, actually has an impressive record for improving the overall health of a breed. Now, as an example, one guide dog school uh, performed hip screening on its breeding stock and used that data to produce estimated breeding values or EBVs for their dogs in terms of the health of the hips. And by using this method, they were able to improve the health of their mostly German Shepherd dogs um, over eight generations by not just a little bit, but by a whole lot. Now, among first generation puppies at the school, 34% of their German Shepherd dogs, of, they had 273 dogs at the time, rated as having excellent hips. And that was kind of their starting point, 34%. And then after eight generations of selecting breeding pairs based on their estimated breeding values, not just simply the best hips to the best hips, over eight generations, they improved that to 93%, over 93%, of their German Shepherd dogs um, now receiving excellent scores on their hips. This really showcases the power of using estimated breeding values for selecting mates instead of just simply to the best to the best. So I would consider this method of selecting breeding pairs um, from an estimated breeding value as kind of the gold standard for selecting two mates to be together. Um, so it's worth asking your breeder that you're considering, do they use estimated breeding values or do they just do the traditional method of simply selecting the best to the best when breeding? Now, fair warning, if your breeder says that they just select the best to the best, I personally wouldn't walk away from all those breeders because honestly, I would say almost no breeders use that currently. Um, and this includes Arlo's breeder. He didn't use it. He used the method of selecting best to the best. That's their traditional method. If you held out for a breeder that used estimated breeding values, you might be waiting a very, very long time and may even never find a dog. But it's important though that I think we start to ask for estimated breeding values and kind of, you know, urge breeders to start considering that as an option or as something that they should look into because it just produces amazing results in a breed as a whole. In future episodes of Puppy Corner, we're going to be deep diving into a lot of the specifics of what to ask 
from your breeder, what responses may or may not or should or shouldn't be a deal breaker for you. So make sure you're not only subscribed down below, but that bell icon is, is dark gray and you've clicked on that bell icon to get all notifications of videos I release so that you don't miss the next episode and potentially miss a very important piece to this puzzle. Um, guys, the estimated breeding value stuff is really exciting to me. It has a lot of potential to benefit the future health of the Doberman breed. We just got to start asking for it as puppy buyers moving forward. So if you're one of those concerned Doberman owners who have gone to great lengths and gotten your Doberman DNA health tested through MBAR, for example, and you have echocardiogram and 24-hour halter monitor results as well, please consider donating all those uh, results and all that data to the Doberman Diversity Project. They do great things with that information to help really benefit the future of the Doberman breed. You can donate your results to this address here. It's popping up on your screen. I will also link to that page in the description down below so you can get there easily. And I will also link to a video in the description of this one um, that is a step-by-step -step how to donate those results to the Doberman Diversity Project because I think it's such an important thing to do. So remember, if you've health tested your dog through Embark DNA testing and you have Holter exam, 24-hour uh, Holter monitor results and echocardiogram results, please donate that to the Doberman Diversity Project. Links will be in the description down below. And if you haven't taken the first step to even DNA test your dog yet, I'll also link to a video in the description down below that shows you step-by-step -step how to do that as well. I also want to take a moment to personally thank the good people over there at the Doberman Diversity Project for collaborating with me on this and providing me with some, just some great research and helping to educate me with the most accurate information possible so I can provide the most accurate info to my subscribers I can possibly provide. And thank you so much for watching this new series, guys of an uh, exciting new series, Puppy Corner, dedicated to you who are right now in the trenches trying to find your next Doberman puppy. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.